The Mutual Broadcasting System, in cooperation with Family Theater Incorporated, presents Where the Heart Is, starring Gigi Perot, Stephen Dunn, and Peter Miles. Adolf Manju is your host. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. the holiday season is over, but somehow the holiday rush lingers on. It seems that we never quite catch up with things. We're always busy. Friends are too busy to call. Relatives too busy to write. Everybody's too busy. The worst of it is, some parents are too busy even to lay the cornerstone for a happy home. Too busy to ask God for the help they need. Too busy to bring their family together in prayer. To call down God's blessing on every member of the home. There aren't enough hours in the day or days in the week to thank God for what he has done for us and pray for the things we need. Yes, we're all very busy, but no family that wants a home filled with love and happiness is too busy for daily family prayer. Adolf Manju will return following our family theater play, Where the Heart Is. Starring Gigi Perot as Elizabeth, Stephen Dunn as Dan Edwards, and Peter Miles as Sandy. When the echoes of the last V bomb had died away and the world had settled down to this simmering peace, Elizabeth Westmoreland like thousands of other British children, was left without home or family. But Elizabeth was luckier than most. Her mother had been an American. And when her mother's sister learned that Elizabeth was still alive, she sent for her. On this day of her arrival, Elizabeth and her Aunt Helen have just entered the aunt's New York apartment. Welcome to your new home, Elizabeth. Thank you, Miss Alexander. Look, why don't you call me Aunt Helen? I'd like to. It's just that... It's just... Oh, just what, dear? Well, I've known you such a short time, I'd hate to have you think that I was too familiar. <laughs> well, you poor form of little darling, you call me anything you like. Here, let me take your coat and... And as soon as we've had lunch, we'll go shopping and get you a new outfit. New outfit? Yes, coats, dresses, shoes, socks, everything. Would you like that? Oh, yes. But I don't have any clothing coupons. We don't need clothing coupons, Elizabeth. Oh. Now then, what would you like for lunch? Anything you have would be very nice. Well, how about a couple of boiled eggs? Two eggs? Mm, well, if you don't think you could eat them, why... Uh... Oh, I can eat them. But really, Miss Alexander, you shouldn't do that. Well, do what, child? Trade in the black market. It isn't fair to others. Well, I don't know what you're talking about. Why, clothing without coupons. As many eggs as I can eat. Well, if the bobbies catch you, you'll have to pay a fine, and they'll put your picture in the paper, and none of your f friends or neighbors will speak oh, to you. Elizabeth. Yes, Aunt? Well, you needn't fear that I'll be caught trading in the black market. We catch them every day. But there is no black market here. Then how can you get these things? Well, there's no rationing here, darling. No rationing? What sort of a country is this? <laughs> Would you like a glass of milk while I'm getting your eggs ready? May I have as much of that as I want to? Of course you can. And as soon as you've finished eating, we'll go shopping for your new clothes. Miss Alexander? Yes, Elizabeth? Would you please kiss me goodnight? I'd love to. There. Pleasant dreams, darling. Thank you. I'm sure they will be. Milk and eggs and oranges and bananas... And all those clothes without coupons. It seems as though I've been dreaming all day. 
But when you wake up in the morning, you'll find it's all very real. Good night, dear. Good night, Aunt Helen. <laughs> Why, Elizabeth, dear, what's wrong? What are you crying about? Nothing. I was just thinking about my friends back in the home. I wish that they could have some of the things I had today. I wish that... Oh, Aunt Helen, I miss them so. Oh, of course you do, darling. <laughs> You're lonesome and homesick. But you'll get over it. No, I won't. In the morning, we're going to enroll you in a school where you'll meet new friends. They'll help you to forget your homesickness. I wonder if my new schoolmates will like me. Of course they will, darling. While before school's over tomorrow, you'll be thinking of them as old friends. <laughs> Story, the chemists. And cops, bobbies. And streetcars, trams. Why? Because that's what they are, that's why. Not in this country. Then I'll get out of this country. I'll go back where things are what they're supposed to be, where people are kind and polite and not nasty and spiteful to strangers. <laughs> They were hateful, Aunt Helen. They taunted me about everything I said. Oh, I'm sure they didn't mean anything by it, Elizabeth. Then why did they follow me around and make sport of me? Well, because they're... Well, they're children and thoughtless. The children in the home weren't like that. When a new child arrived, we all tried to be very gentle and loving. You had a great common bond in the home, dear. I wish I'd never left it. Elizabeth! Oh, I am sorry, Aunt Helen... I didn't really mean that. Oh, I'm sure you didn't, darling. I just don't want to go back to that school, ever. I'm afraid you must. Why? They don't like me. Oh, it isn't that, dear. They just don't understand you. But that won't last long. After all, you do have what we call an English accent, and, well, it does sound strange to American ears. Even to yours? Even to mine. But it'll be forgotten in a few days, and the children will stop teasing you. Now run along and wash the tear stains off your face. Then we'll have lunch. This afternoon we'll go back to school and you can start all over again. come while I'm here. Why not? I'm Sandy Edwards. Oh. They don't like me much. I licked them. All at once? Well, not all. Just a few at a time. My. What's your name? Elizabeth Westmoreland. Say that again, will you? Elizabeth Westmoreland. You just come here from Boston? No. From England. Oh. I figured you were a foreigner of some kind. Why should you? Because you talk so funny. I don't talk funny. Okay, you don't. But it sounds funny to me. What does your dad do? He's up in the sky. Gosh, an aviator? Do you think you could get him to take me up? He's dead. Oh. My mom's dead. So's mine. They were both killed in the war. Gee, that's tough. I didn't ever know them, really. But I wish I had. They look awfully nice in their pictures. So does my mom. I'm sure she does. Who takes care of you? My aunt. My dad takes care of me. Of course, I'm ten. I could take care of myself. I'm sure you could. You are? Here, have a lifesaver. Thank you. You want to see me stand on my head? If you like. Okay. Of course, I lean my back against a tree. Just a little. The boys at the home didn't. Yeah? Where's the home? In England. I lived there before my aunt brought me here. What kind of a place is it? A home for war orphans. It's very nice, really, if you don't have any people of your own. 
I don't think I'd like it. Well, I'm sure you would. Everyone was very kind. Why, sometimes they had mistress even kiss me goodnight. I know I wouldn't like that. Why? I don't like being kissed. I do. That's different. You're a girl. I suppose you're right. Of course I'm right. Say, you gonna hide here all night? No, just until those boys move on. I'll move them for you. Oh, you couldn't. Could you? You just watch. Do be careful. They'll run if I say boo. <laughs> Does your eye hurt badly, Sandy? Nah, not much. Whatever happened, Sandy? I must have forgot to say boo. I was afraid there were too many of them. That isn't it. I think they hit me when I wasn't looking. In the eye? You going home now? I suppose I might as well. Sure. Well, see you tomorrow. What will your father say about your eye? Nothing. Really? No. That's why I think going home is the best part of the day. No matter what happens at school, Dad can make me forget it. Must be very comforting. Doesn't your aunt do that for you? I don't really know. You see, I've only known my aunt since yesterday. Gosh. We don't seem to understand each other very well. When the boys teased me this morning, Aunt Helen thought it was all nonsense. She said I was just being too sensitive. It makes it awfully lonely. Yeah. Dad says everybody has to have somebody they can depend on. You're coming home with me. I'd like that. Of course you will. It's rather late today. I'll ask my aunt this evening, and perhaps tomorrow I'll visit you. Visit me? I'm not talking about visiting. You come to our place to live. Oh, I couldn't. Why not? You see, there isn't a single good reason. We've got an extra bedroom, and Dad'll be glad to have you. Do you really think so? Sure. He's crazy about English people. Why, he even drinks tea. He sounds wonderful, Sandy. Believe me, Elizabeth, he is. Come on, we're going home. Is that you, Dad? Be right there, son. Okay. What are you shaking for, Elizabeth? Shaking? Oh, well, perhaps I'm a little nervous. What about? Well, your father... Don't be silly. I told you he's... Oh, hello, Dad. Oh, well, hiya, son. How'd it go today? I... Well, well, I didn't know we had company. This is Elizabeth Westmoreland. Well, how do you do, Miss Westmoreland? How do you do, Mr. Edwards? Elizabeth just came here from England yesterday, Dad. She's going to live with us. She's going to... Oh, oh, well, uh... What does your family think of the idea, Elizabeth? Or didn't it seem important enough to mention? I just have an aunt, Mr. Edwards. And she gave you permission to come and live with us? I told Elizabeth you'd handle her aunt if she gave us any trouble. Oh, I see. Well, uh, perhaps we better have a little drink while we think about this, huh? Would you care for some milk, Miss Westmoreland? Oh, thank you, Mr. Edwards. And you, Sandy? Sure, Dad. I'll get it. Oh, no, no, never mind. Uh, <clears throat> I feel the need of a little uh, milk myself. Isn't he swell, Elizabeth? Wonderful, Sandy. He doesn't act at all like a grown-up. Do you think he'll let me stay? Why wouldn't he? Well, there must be some reasons. Can you think of a good one? Well, no. And stop worrying. Dad'll take care of everything. I do hope he likes me. He likes anybody I like. Did you ever have any boyfriends at the home in England? Oh, yes. Dozens of them. Dozens? Certainly. And dozens of girlfriends, too. Girlfriends don't count. But in this country, you can only have one boyfriend. At a time, that is. Really? Absolutely. And if you want to be my girlfriend, then I've got to be your only boyfriend. Oh, you are my only boyfriend, Sandy. Okay, then. You can be my girlfriend. There, there. <clears throat> Feel much better. Now, am I uh, interrupting something here? Uh-uh. Elizabeth and I were just getting, uh... Huh? Getting something straightened out. Oh, oh, see. Well, um, here's your milk, Elizabeth. Thank you, Mr. Edwards. And you, Sandy. Thanks, Dad. Ah, now, suppose we, uh, sit down and discuss this little matter of Elizabeth's, uh, living with us, hmm? I showed her where her room would be. I think it's lovely, Mr. Edwards. Well, before we go into all that, why don't you uh, tell me a little about this sudden decision to leave your aunt? Was she mean to you? Oh, no, Mr. Edwards. Aunt Helen was very kind. I don't think she is, Dad. Please, Sandy, please. Well, if your aunt is kind, Elizabeth, why don't you like her? I do like her, Mr. Edwards. I... I love her. Hmm. Still, you'd rather not live with her, huh? It was my idea, Dad. Yes, yes, I figured that out, son. See, Elizabeth, how smart he is? 
Now, look, uh, there must have been some reason for your accepting Sandy's idea, Elizabeth. Now, come on, do you mind telling me what it was? Well, my aunt and I just don't seem to understand each other, Mr. Edwards. Oh, I see. I believe Sandy said that you just arrived here from England. Just yesterday. Ah. Well, it's up to you, of course, but uh, I really think you should give your aunt a little more time before walking out on her, leaving her all alone. I hadn't thought of that. Her being all alone. Yeah. Getting late, too, you know. She must be worried sick about your not having come home from school. Oh, well, perhaps I'd better go home and see. Mm. She isn't worried. You can come right back. Say, uh, why don't we all walk over together? Oh, I'd like that. Good, good. Maybe if I had a chance to talk with your aunt, we might be able to work out some sort of a Len-Lease deal, hmm? Yes? Oh, Elizabeth, where have you been? Over at Sandy's. Where? Well, perhaps I can explain. Uh, I'm Dan Edwards, Sandy's father. Oh, Mrs. Uh... Uh, Miss Alexander. Oh. Uh, won't you come in? Well, thank you. Thank you very much. You see, when, uh, when I came home from work, I found Elizabeth and Sandy waiting for me. Oh, I was so worried. Yes, I can imagine. This is Sandy, Aunt Helen. He fought the boys who were teasing me. Mm -hmm. Oh. Well, how do you do, Sandy? Hello. Mm. He's going to let me be his girlfriend. <clears throat> I, uh, I wonder if I could speak to you alone, Miss Alexander. Well, yes, of course. Why don't you take Sandy and show him your playroom, Elizabeth? All right. Come on, Sandy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, well, uh, won't you sit down, Mr. Edwards? Oh, thanks, thanks, yes. I, uh, <laughs> I hardly know how to say this, Miss Alexander, but... Oh. Well, I've had the same problem you're facing, and I thought that possibly you might benefit from my experience. Oh, well, thank you, Mr. Edwards. Mm -hmm. Uh... Now, if you would just tell me what problem it is that I'm facing, I'd be even more grateful. Oh, oh, well, uh, Elizabeth wanted to come and live with us. What? Well, that's ridiculous. Not to a child, Miss Alexander. Particularly an unhappy child. Well, why should Elizabeth be unhappy? Because you let her down today. Oh, now, really, Mr. Edwards... Well, I didn't mean to be so blunt, but... Well, from what Elizabeth told me, the greatest blow she suffered today was your admitting that her accent sounded strange, even to your ears. Well, it does. Of course it does. But when you told her so, you took away the only prop she had to lean on. You. Well, surely she should be able to understand. At eight? When you can't understand her? I suppose you are a child psychologist. No, no. I happen to be a plumbing salesman who loves kids enough to try to see things through their eyes. And, of course, you're very successful. Well, my boy doesn't want to run away from me. And he apparently had no difficulty convincing Elizabeth that uh, she should come and live with us. I think you've said enough, Mr. Edwards. I'm sorry I presume to advise you, Miss Alexander. I won't do it again. Now, if you'll find Sandy for me, we'll be on our way. Oh. Uh, good evening, Mr. Edwards. Well, uh, good evening, Miss Alexander. <laughs> May I come in? Well, of course, of course. Come right in. Thank you. Well, I hardly expected to see you again after last night. Oh, that's why I'm here. I, I'm terribly sorry that I was so rude. Oh, you weren't rude at all. You were quite right, as a matter of fact. Would you uh, care for a Coke or something? Oh, oh no, thank you. I'll, I'll just stay a minute. Oh. I, I was resentful last night only because... Because I came to your house a perfect stranger and offered unsolicited advice. No, I'm very glad you did. Oh, as I started to say, I was resentful only because I... I'd been terribly worried, and... Well, I was blaming myself for all the dreadful things I imagined might have happened to Elizabeth. When you confirm my opinion of myself, I... Well, I, I turn my resentment against you. Oh, well, I don't blame you a bit. Say, uh, how is Elizabeth today? You know, Sandy hasn't come home yet, so I haven't had a report. Oh, she's in much better spirits. Go ahead. In fact, she and Sandy are in my place now. Oh? I was hoping that he could stay for dinner. Well, of course he can. And I thought that... Perhaps you'd like to come, too. Then maybe from now on we could try to work out our problems together. You know, I think that would be a very nice idea, Miss Alexander. Good afternoon, 
Sandy. Good afternoon, Aunt Helen. Did the boys tease you today, Elizabeth? No. Sandy and I have those dopes on the run. Well. Haven't we, Sandy? We sure have, Elizabeth. They haven't teased me more than a month now. Ever since Sandy taught me to yell, Yeah, your father's mustache. Oh, I believe I can understand that. Well, you two run along and get ready for dinner. Sandy's father's going to be here. He's here every night, isn't he? Why, yes. Hurry, please, children. Okay, Aunt Helen. Come on, Sandy. I'm coming. And please don't start another water fight in the bathroom, Elizabeth. I don't have time to clean up after you. Okay, Aunt Helen. We won't. Have you noticed how much Aunt Helen has changed, Sandy? Changed? Yes. She isn't at all like she was when I first came here. She seems much happier. Oh, well, that's probably because I've been here so much. Dad says men and women need each other. Does Uncle Dan have a girlfriend? No. Aunt Helen doesn't have a boyfriend either. I think they're both too smart. What do you mean? Grown-ups aren't like kids. When they have girlfriends or boyfriends, the first thing you know, they get married. Well, you're going to marry me, aren't you? That's different. You and I understand each other. I suppose you're right. Still, if Aunt, if Uncle, if Aunt Helen and Uncle Dan were to get married, we could be together all the time. Gee, I hadn't thought of that. Go ahead, you wash up first. Do you think we ought to suggest it to them? Sure. They'd probably never think of it themselves. We can tell them at dinner. Yeah. Hurry up. I want to get washed, too. Okay. Hey, wait a minute. We can't tell them that. Why not? Because if they got married, we couldn't. That'd make me your brother and all. That's all right, Sandy. I can always be a sister to you. <laughs> This is Adolphe Mangeau again. I think you all know that Family Theatre is your program dedicated to your family and all the families of the world. All of us who appear on Family Theatre feel that prayer, family prayer, can make the difference between a happy and an unhappy home. Ultimately, it can mean the difference between a peaceful and a war-torn world. That is why our New Year's wish for you is this very simple one. That you may come to realize, by your own experience, the blessings that family prayer can bring to your home. For the family that prays together stays together. Thank you for being with us, and God bless you. Our grateful thanks to Gigi Perot, who played Elizabeth, Stephen Dunn, heard as Dan Edwards, and Peter Miles, who played Sandy, for their appearances. And to Bill Hampton for writing our play. Music was scored and conducted by Max Tear. This production of Family Theater Incorporated was directed by David Young. The cast included Gene Bates, Janine Roos, and Michael Chapin. Next week, our Family Theater star will be Eddie Cantor in Gentlemen, Be Seated. Your hostess will be Rosalind Russell. This series of the Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who felt the need for this kind of program and by the mutual broadcasting system which has responded to this need. Be with us next week at the same time when Eddie Cantor and Rosalind Russell will star on Family Theater. Tony Lofrano speaking. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.